uh, as we can see here, we have the network parameters, the network performance metric uh, that uh, are able to measure the performance of this old wireless network of femtocells. And here we can see a representation of the uh, first floor of the CTTC building resulting from, from the deployment of uh, a 12 node all wireless uh, network of femtocells that we deploy in, within the context of the Bifemto project. In this case, we are showing uh, an experiment, a real life experiment, in which one flow is sent from this home node B to the local Fento gateway, which is the node in the top left border of this close to grid topology. These real experiments are relative to the current experiment that we are running. This means that the color depicted by these nodes is uh, relative to all the, traf all, all the colors within the same experiment. On the other hand, what's happening in, uh, in this experiment? As Josep explained, we configure the B parameter of the routing protocol with a very high and fixed value. This means that routing decisions are merely taken using geographic information, and so just Euclidean distance to the local Fento gateway is used to forward packets. And this is the result of the experiment, which means all the packets use one single path to reach the local Femto gateway. Okay, thanks Jose. So, um, the basic idea now is, in this new experiment we are maintaining still the same value of V, which is high and fixed, and now we'll see how the protocol evolves um, when there is some impairment in the network. For example, a node goes down, which is the one, the node with a, marked with an X. Uh, and what will happen, what you will see real time, but I, I'm explaining a, a bit before Jose shows you the, the operation um, in real time, is what you will see is that every 20 seconds we are switching on and off this node. And what we are presenting here is the evolution that you will see uh, over time. Off, in this case, the queue overflows. So if you focus on the red curve, what you see is that when the node is switched off, all the packets that we are sending are lost because the only neighbor that can help us reach the destination is down. So then we cannot send these packets to our uh, preferred neighbor and then all of them are lost. So when the node comes on again, then there are no losses and then there, there are losses, all the packets are lost and so on. And this is what you will see in the heat map now. In this experiment, we are periodically switching on and off this home node B. The routing protocol is still configured with a high and fixed B parameter, which means that we merely use geographic information to reach the intended destination, which is the local femto gateway. As we can see here, we are plotting the Cuba clocks in the network of femtocells, and when the node is switched off, we can see how the queue of this node is full. Once the node is switched on again, we can see how the Cuba clocks is able to uh, practically uh, decrease its congestion, and so just a Cuba clock of two packets is on the source, home node B. Another time we switch off this home node B and the Cuba clocks the Cuba clock of the source home node B gets full. 
leading to Q overflows in the network of femtocells. Once the node is switched on again, all the packets are able to reach the destination as in the previous case. But as we will see in uh, a few seconds, once the node is switched off, there are no packet transmissions with the current configuration of the routing protocol. In the next experiment, we will see how a variable B algorithm is able to not lose any packet, as in this case, when the nodes are either switched on, when this node is able to switch on or switch off. Okay, let's now move to, uh, I mean, the, our ideal case, let's say, the, the reason uh, that for which we design our variable V scheme. So based on the observations that you have just seen, we decided to go for a variable V scheme that adapted to the network conditions. So now we are running experiment on a variable V scheme still with one flow, the same flow as before, so nothing happens when all the nodes are up, so we still take decisions for going straight to the destination, but the, the crucial difference here is that when the same node as before goes down, the V parameter is adapted, in fact is lowered, so that the decisions are not taken anymore only based or exclusively based on reaching the destination as fast as we can, but on balancing the congestion of the nodes. So what happens is that when this go node goes down, um, this other node will start increasing its cube log. So the cube log differential between this node and this other node will grow. And then this will be the parameter determining the, our routing decision. So the packet will be diverted to this other node, and then in this way we can circumvent the whole. <coughs> so before going uh, on and, and showing you the real demo with the real-time heat map, let me explain again, based on, on these uh, graphs that uh, show the evolution over time, what is happening. So in terms of Q overflows, Red curves is, is still the same as for, for the previous case. So the fixed V and high value of V, so packets were lost when the node was going down. But in this case, what we see is the green curve, so no Q overflows at all. So we are not losing any packet. In terms of what happens with the V parameter over time, what you see is that every time, again, we are switching on and off the node every 20 seconds. So when the node goes off, so when the node is switched off, the V parameter is decreased. But when the node is switched on again, then the V parameter is increased, so we take destinations through the short, uh, we take uh, routing decisions uh, still based on geographic proximity to the destination. In this way, uh, we get the best, the best of both worlds, let's say of back pressure and geographic information. And just uh, a specific snapshot in, in terms of, uh, of time, evolution of time of, of packets transmitted. So what you see in the red curve, red curve still represents the, the fixed value of V, is that when you switch off the node, uh, packets are lost. So you don't transmit any packet, as Jose showed. And then when the node is switched on again, then you start transmitting packets. On the other hand, in the green curve, what you see is that when the node is switched off, you still transmit packets. You need to wait a bit until the cube log of the congested node increases. And when the node is switched on again, we have all these packets in the cube log of the 
initially congested nodes that are sent through the shortest path, and that's why you have these peaks of packets transmitted. And then we reach again the more or less stationary state, and so on. And now, Jose will show you, uh, let's say, the most interesting part of this demo, because it shows the, the, how the variable V scheme works. This experiment illustrates the results the result of applying a variable V algorithm for the current network configuration, which, as, I, as we previously explained, is based on switching on and off periodically this home node V, which is a key node in the process of routing packets to the intended local femto gateway. We can see here how when the node is switched off, sorry, switch on, all the packets traverse the shortest path to reach the destination with the variable V algorithm. And as we will see, now when the node is when this node will be switched off, which is going to happen in a few seconds, now is the time. And we can see how the variable V algorithm is able to circumvent the hole using a longer path to reach the intended local center gateway. How the variable V algorithm is able to uh, do what I just previously explained. It's based on the configuration auto configuration in each home node B of the B parameter. So when all the nodes are switched on, all the values, all the V values in the in the network are static and fixed. But once we switch off this node, whose val V value is not uh, is not modified, these nodes decrease its their B values and so the degree of load balancing in the network. How do the V values are modified in a distributed and self-organized way in the all wireless network of femtocells? We use Q backlogs around the one hub neighborhood to modify the V value. We can see here we need a node with a queue uh, of uh, 100 packets in order to circumvent the hole and decrease the V parameter. Once the node is switched on, the queue back logs of the home node B sending the 3GPP flows decreases to two packets and the V parameter uh, comes back to its previous value, which is a high fixed V value. Once the node is switched off, the V parameter decreases as a consequence of the increase of the cuba clock in this node. And finally, we will see how, in terms of Q overflows, there are null Q overflows in the network in both cases when the node here is switched on and when the node is switched on. Okay, now that we have seen that our variable scheme works uh, with a single flow, let's put more flows in the network. And in this case, all the UEs and uh, femtos that we have deployed for this demo will be uh, like handling traffic. So the UEs that we have in this room where we record this video